everyone. Are the first communicants here? Would you please come forward and introduce yourselves? Okay? Yeah, just face everybody. Here's the mic. Tell us your name. I'm Kayliana Prethera Morrison. Hi, Kaylee. So what do you like to do? Uh, what are you about? Joy. I'm Tink Badaki. Isabel Badaki. So, what are you about, Isabel? I like to dance and play softball. Since you're both here, since you're both here, why don't we pray together? Okay? Dear Jesus, we thank you for Kaylee and Isabel. We thank you for their families. We thank you for their teachers here at church and at school. We thank you for all of those in the community who love children and want to help us to grow strong in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, we are gathered to begin a three-day service. We gather to prepare. We gather to remember. We gather to relive your death, your sacrifice, all that you have given us. We pray that your hand will be upon us, your spirit will dwell within us in such a way that we follow your self-sacrifice and offer our lives for brothers and sisters in your holy name. Amen. Our gospel is from the 13th chapter of John. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet, Jesus answered. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, let my feet not only my feet be washed, but my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know that I have done what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, 
and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, the gospel of our Lord. So you Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to share a message with, with you, and then we're going to invite you to come forward for an absolution and foot washing. You'll have to be naked. From the ankles down. I mean, you could slip your shoes on and off, but just no socks. Okay? What is it that terrifies you? What is it that's hanging over your head and causes you to worry? What? Hmm? Failure. Debt. Death. Poor health. Coming home with a bad report card? Let's get real. Right, Ting? Got a bad report card? You got to come home with it? Show it to mom, Kaylee? Oh. You might try to wait the weekend till something good happens because they'll punish you and keep you from doing something that you really wanted to do. You hide that sucker. You didn't invent that. Your moms and dads did. We're all afraid of something. Because we're not perfect. Because we won't live forever. Not on our terms. There's something hanging over every one of us. For God's people back in Egypt, many, 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 many years ago, it was another country. It was the Pharaoh. It was non-believers in God. They held down the people. They enslaved them and forced them to do things. It got so bad that they were being successful. The Israelites were successful. And so the Egyptians said, well, you can't have any more kids. And they just ruled over them and put them down. And God said, stop. He said this quite times to Pharaoh, a Pharaoh that forgot Joseph's name. A Pharaoh that didn't know God, but he came to know him through the punishment and through the plagues. And eventually, the Israelites were free. We are Israelites. We're people of God. We too are overrun by things that influence us, that hurt us, that challenge us, that threaten us, and will kill us. Death will kill us. And God's answer, back then in Egypt, in delivering his people out of slavery to the promised land, is the same answer and the same God who speaks to those tyrants in our lives and says, I will deliver you from this table in the presence of Jesus Christ, deliver you into the world. I will deliver you from everything and everyone that tries to rule over you. And Jesus says, trust me. Sounds simple, doesn't it? He washes the disciples' feet. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to wash or offer to wash disciples' feet. Not because we want to be notified. 
or noticed or important, not for our self-image or for our dignity. Instead, we do it simply because Jesus did it. And you might say, well, we never did this before at Grace Church. And I'll say, well, I'm glad I've been here long enough to do it for the first time. I've never done it either. whoop de woo <laughs> Can you imagine the disciples at the Last Supper? Right? Jesus, we don't do this. You're the Master. You're the Lord. You don't do this. They probably did say it. Don't you think? In fact, it's recorded. Peter said, no. Wash my whole body. It's like, whoa, ma'am, please. Put it back on. <laughs> You're clean. You're clean, ma'am. You know, Jesus had to deal with the same stuff. He was an anti-traditionalist. He was the fulfillment of the law. And people saw him time and time again as a threat to the law because they were held captive. Just like in Egypt. Held captive to a tradition. They forgot to worship. So the only reason why we have this glorious, humble table and disciples and Jesus around it tonight to share a meal. The only reason why we're going to be on our knees and, and wash feet tonight. Yeah. The only reason why is because Jesus Christ did it. It's his image implanted on us. It's his example that we're being called to follow. That's the reason why. Because each and every one of us want to be set free from sin, from death, from the devil. And the only way is through Jesus Christ. And that's why. So six of us, please come forward, will wash feet. I will wash their feet. They will wash my feet. We will wash your feet and say, go ahead and have a seat. Your sins are washed away in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's an absolution as well. Thank you. 
go forward as you desire.
stand together and sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has to me whenever I call. How shall I, shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will have salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O Lord, truly I am your servant, I am your servant, the child of your handmaiden. You have freed me from my bonds. Our Lord, I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in Christ's Passover from death to new life, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy One, you bow down to serve your people. By your love and mercy, shape us to reflect our Lord's self-giving example of service to others. Bring all people into your fellowship of love. Pass us over from death into life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son washed the feet of and ate with the ones who would deny and betray Him. Transform the world by reconciling enemies to one another and overcoming evil with love. Make us worthy to share your food. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You listen to the cries of your people and mercifully attend to them. Especially attend to those whom we lift to you at this time. We thank you for Vanport Presbyterian Church who fed brothers and sisters in our fellowship hall tonight. Use us to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, and welcome the lonely and outcast. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Enrich the children and youth of our congregation with abundance of your spirit. For each child in our community, for parents and guardians, for our first communicants, Kaylee, and Isabel, and the faith formation leaders. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You announce the promise of deliverance through the people of your first covenant. Bring joy to the Passover celebration of our Jewish siblings. Lead us to proclaim your goodness together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Attend to the needs of the whole world with your saving grace, and lead us all into new life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated for the offering.
Let us pray together. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, from death to life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, let us join together in this special Passover observance. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for your guidance on how to be one and find ways for our faith to be shared. As we share this bread and wine, may it show my love for you in giving my body and shedding my blood. Thank you for the gift of life. Keep us together in your loving care. Amen. Will the two communicants come forward, please? Everyone, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take that. Hold on to it till we dip. Okay. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Go ahead. Okay. Or you may be turn to your seats and we'll start passing out here, okay? I'll, I'll give to you. Right, if Christ, you can pass, use that to pass down, okay? Then you can take that and pass it over. I think you have things there, but we'll, we'll make it this way. <laughs> the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Others may now come forward to receive the bread and wine. Where are the other two girls going to help pass it out? Or is there... Two of you take the white balls. Two take the white balls. Two of you take the cups. Two take the cups, okay. Bowl and cup. Cup and bowl. He's going to. 
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in the wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live, for you live and reign with the Father and the Son, Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.